we've got all we've got a lot of grand work that needs to be done. Um, and then maybe maybe after after we finish today, uh, uh, stick around a little bit, and I want to get a feel for what everybody needs. But I do want to get everybody up to speed on on grand regulation. So we'll, we'll just start there. Anybody know the main difference between? Upright regulation or uh, upright action, grand action. Okay. Okay. Yes. That, that's a good. A little hard it's to hear you. Double double oh. it's double, like yeah, that's the main one. The, yeah. the keys are like part of the action, whereas an upright, it's like they're separate. Oh. Right. So, I mean, so they're like separate. The, also. That's right. called the stack. You're yeah. referring to the stack, yeah, which like is this part. Like the keypad is attached to the action, so you have to like pull the whole thing out. Yeah. yeah. Right. So is this the whippet? Yes. Great. Okay. So, uh, so the main difference, yes, uh, is is double escapement, and what that refers to is on an upright action. What's the part that? Why don't you come over here, Steve? So you can, what's the part called? Um, as you do know, what's the part called that, that hits the bottom of the hammer butt under here? The hammer jack? Yeah, the jack. That's right, exactly. So that is the part that escapes, right? That's, that's actually what was the main difference between earlier keyboard instruments like 1600s, 17, you know, early 1700s. There was like the harpsichord, there was the organ. It doesn't matter, right, how hard you hit the key on an organ, you're gonna you're gonna get air blowing what through the pipes or whatever, however an organ works, or not. Same with the harpsichord. You play you play harpsichord and it and it has little plucker things. I think they're actually called plectors that were made of quills, I think. Mm -hmm. And so they come up when you hit the key, they come up and pluck the string, and then they actually pluck it again on their way down. And and so it doesn't matter if you play it really softly or really hard, it's still gonna pluck at the same volume. So, so the, original, the original name for a piano, uh, or one of the original names, is what? Do you know? Pianola? What's that? Pianola or pianoforte? Pianoforte, pianoforte. pianoforte. right, which means soft, loud in Italian, mm -hmm. which is the main difference between the piano and all of these earlier instruments like the organ and the harpsichord, clavichord, where it doesn't matter how hard you play. On a piano, though, it does matter how hard you play. It's gonna, it's gonna play loud and soft, or, or soft and loud, like the piano and forte, and then and then the name piano just kind of stuck, which just means soft. Okay, so the reason for that, the reason that you can play soft and loud, is because of escapement. That's the whole thing. The, what escapement is is, right? It's it's that you you lose control. That's that's that last little eighth of an inch. You've lost contact or. You, lost direct control with the hammer. It flies to the string on just momentum alone. And so depending on how much momentum you give it by how hard you, how hard you hit it, the, the, the mallet or the hammer is going to hit that string either soft or loud, unlike, unlike an organ or these other things. Okay, so escapement is what it's all about. That's really the main like innovation in, in instrument making. On, on, a, on an upright piano, you have one component that actually propels that hammer towards the string. And on an upright, or a grand action, there's actually two components that simultaneously propel the knuckle. This is the knuckle, right? There's the hammer. So it's two components. This is the jack, just like on an upright. And anybody know what this part's called? It's called the repetition lever. Okay, so, so simultaneously, do you see in that window there how the, the repetition lever has a little window that the jack comes up through? And both of them, both the repetition lever, like either side of the repetition lever and the jack, all three of them, but it's, I guess the repetition lever is actually one part, so, so both of them are actually pushing on that knuckle. Okay, and back to, back to the upright, what's the component called? Matthew, jack. that uh, that lets the jack off, or escapes the jack, causes the jack to escape. I guess. 
what's that part called? The button? Yeah, yeah, the let off button. Okay. In, in a grand, there's also a let off button, and it does the same thing, exactly the same thing as, it, as in an in a upright piano. It just trips the jack. And I don't know if this is regulated or not. Yeah, it looks like it's reasonably regulated. So you can see right there, that's where the, where the jack is tripped by the let off button. And then you have this part here, this little screw that you, there's the top of the screw. That's essentially, it's, it's called the drop screw, but it's essentially the same, it serves the same purpose as, the, as the, the let off button here does for the jack. It's essentially a screw that stops the um, repetition lever from continuing its upward progress. So it's, it's like a repetition lever let off button, so but it's called the drop screw. <clears throat> Is, is that screw and the button supposed to basically touch the exact same? Exactly, button? yes. Yes, that's, a, that's cool that you caught that. That's called simultaneous escapement. There's even a name for it. So simultaneous escapement happens it's it, on a properly regulated piano. It, it is simultaneous. The only, the only difference, the reason there is a little bit of like fudginess or fuzziness, I guess, is because with, with the... Um, with the let-off of, of the, uh, the jack, it's actually kind of a process. Like it, 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 it takes a little bit for that jack to come off of the, of the knuckle. Whereas the repetition lever, it comes up to the screw, the drop screw, and it stops. Like it's, it's like a digital, like it's on and then it's off. So am I, am I picturing it right to say that because of the slight movement, that the repetition lever has to go through, that in the fudginess, the top screw could be just slightly behind? Um, let's see, slightly behind, yes. It, it actually, um, well, I guess it depends on what you mean by behind, but well, just but yes, to where, there is a... To where the repetition lever would actually touch the button just a hair before the repetition lever touches the top screw. Or what did you call that screw, sorry? So, sorry, which one, which one hits first? I'm thinking the repetition lever, just slightly first, because it has to go through that slight motion. Um, but I don't kind of, they actually, okay, yeah, that's, wow, you're really thinking through this. That's some, like, advanced thinking for your, this is your first introduction into this. So, yeah, that's, they, they actually strike at the same time, or they're supposed to strike at the same time. So what you have here is you have drop right there, that little sixteenth of an inch drop. So what that means is what it, what it drops to is it's dropping right there to, see the jack is out of the way. If I wiggle the jack, it's, you can tell nothing is happening because the jack is, is off the knuckle. It's the, the knuckle here is resting entirely on the repetition lever. You see how that fell? So if I, well now it's in check. So, okay. If I pull, on, pull down on the repetition lever, that hammer's gonna fall. Meaning it's resting on the repetition lever. So the point to which it drops to, um, I guess, okay. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but, but since we're on this topic, Basically, right here, where they both touch, where, where this touches there and that touches there, that's where the repetition lever gets out of the way. But because the jack, it's a little bit of a process to come off the knuckle, the hammer's gonna go actually a little bit higher, and that's driven entirely by the jack because the repetition lever has been stopped by the drop screw, okay? So the, the additional distance, even though it's touching there, the additional distance that the hammer continues to go up, which is about a sixteenth of an inch, is, that, is, the, is the jack pulling away from the knuckle. And so what it drops down to, because the jack is now totally out of the way, is the repetition lever where it stopped when, when the jack initially hit the let off button. So the point of the exactly. repetition letter and the, the drop is to clear the actual hammer from the movement of the string? Um, 
No, not okay. totally. That's that's the let off distance. Um, right. More, yeah. No, I was just thinking. Okay. Trying to figure out that. Okay, the the purpose more is to it kind of serves the same purpose as the the rest rail. Mm -hmm. Meaning the purpose of the rest rail or when you're in check right there, um, it's it's the back check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The back check, what it does is it holds the hammer out of the way so the jack can get back under. It's all about the jack here. It's all about the jack here. So really the repetition lever is really just an assistant. It just assists it holds the hammer up and out of the way so the jack can get back under. Because there again... Um, it can't be resting on the knuckle. The jack. The I jack mean, can't be resting on the knuckle. The other way around. Like, the, like in an upright, you can't have or, or the yeah, hammer the resting knuckle. on the jack. That's why I associate yes. it to the knuckle. Yeah. And in the grand, you can't have that either. You can't have the, the knuckle that's on the hammer. Um, resting on the jack, Correct. you need it to rest on the, on the uh, rep lever. Okay, so and we can simulate that quickly like on this action. So right here, this hammer is not resting on the rest rail like it's supposed to. It's resting on the jack, mm -hmm. so it'll probably fail. It hurt here. It works once, but then. Now, uh, now we can kind of. Sometimes you can kind of wiggle it. To get that, come on, Jack. Get under there. Is that, is that there the jack stuck underneath when it's doing that? Is the jack stuck underneath? It, yeah, it's you can see what's happening. You can't reset. So yeah, if I reset. if I release it slowly, the oh. jack wants to be under here, but it can't because it's there's okay. it's resting on the jack, Got so it, it can't get under. So what I was doing there when I was kind of wiggling it is I'm, is I'm like, there we go, kind of. Moving stuff so the so the jack can can flip back under with the spring. It's supposed to be a, a really nice and loose pinning, not like the hammer pinning, which is relatively tight. You want the pinning here on the on the jack to be very loose, so it just flips back under very quickly. Okay, and then so so here we have we have that problem there, and then watch if I just get that under to the point where that jack there it goes good again okay the repetition lever serves the same purpose it holds that that hammer the, the the knuckle up so the jack can get back under so um, the repetition lever is only lifting the lifting the the knuckle by the strength of the spring so it's it's spongy whereas the, the jack it's a hard push like there's there's the only way to prevent that from lifting the knuckle is to break apart, break a certain component. Oh, so, sorry. Sorry. so if we were to um, get the jack out of the way, it, it misfires in the exact same way this misfires. And you don't want it like in the, in the sweet spot, you don't want it resting, like you don't want the rub lever to be too high or too low because then it's resting on the jack, but it, if it's too high, it, I forgot what happened. You kind of lost motion. Yeah. Right? Which is hard on a grand lever, right? I remember that, that lost motion isn't like a big thing as in... That's right. Up, right? Exactly. That's why they're better too. Yeah. Right, because the whipping wouldn't be engaging at all. The rep that. lever? You can... Until the hammer hits the bottom, the... Uh, I don't know the name of the part. The knuckle. The knuckle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the repetition, not at rest. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just trying to visualize all this, mm -hmm. even though I'm looking at it. It's hard to talk about like one single thing because I'm used what to like the whole cycle. In the entire thing. <laughs> and on the ground, it is like a serious cycle. You go back and forth all the time. Well, just to backtrack real quick, Brigham. So as far as my little question a minute ago, for all intents and purposes, when we're setting the the uh, button and the 
repetition lever, mm -hmm. we're shooting for simultaneous, right? Exactly. Okay. Simultaneous escapement. But you don't you don't regulate it that way. I'll, I'll teach you how to regulate it. Because it's 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 rest the hammer is resting on the rest rail and that's falling under, um, which on a on an upright you want the the shank here to rest on the rest rail. Mm -hmm. In a grand, you actually want it to start about a shank's width up, so it permanently lives on the the repetition lever. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't rest. So the hammer rest rail doesn't even rest on mm -hmm. the rest rail. That's right. So what's it there for? To prevent, great question. It's it's really to prevent the oh, this okay. from clicking on that. Oh, okay. Like Just on a ricochet. Yeah. Plus yeah. so right. there's probably a pedal that brings them closer, right? The rest rail. Uh, not on a not on a grand. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah. No, there's a pedal that moves the whole thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah shift shift pedal. And then sustain little pedal, or sometimes other other things. Okay, does everybody basically understand the the general theory? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ezzy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, then then uh, why don't I why don't I say this? Okay, so um, <clears throat> so this is called drop, right? I mentioned that right there, that little sixteenth of an inch drop. That's the knuckle coming down onto the or the, the jack getting out, so, so it's no longer supporting it. Is that called? Is that just let off on an upright? Well, uh, well, let off. There isn't drop on an upright. Yeah, there isn't, right. But that little wink right there, that's the drop. Right, that is correct. So, so what, what actually happens in slow motion photography is, um, okay, yeah, let's talk about that rise first. Okay, when, when this drop occurs when, when you don't hit it hard enough to put it into check. Checking is where the tail is connected with the back check here. See if I if I push this away, push the back check away, it'll pop up because these two are connected just by friction. Okay, so if I if I go slow enough, they don't connect. It just it just does its little drop. But if we go into uh, check there, and I let go of this, it pops up. Why would that pop up? Is it like Pop. resetting for the next motion? The back check's too close. No, that's that's correct. That's actually good checking. Mm -hmm. but, so so why why would it? What's actually mechanically going on when I put it into check and then I release it and it pops up like that? Oh, the repetition lever hasn't reached the drop. Yes, screw? it's pushing well, up to its. Yes, uh, both. Okay, so the repetition lever actually did hit the drop screw on its way up, uh -huh. but then the hammer ricochet came back down and now it's compressing the spring on the repetition lever. Mm -hmm. So it pushed it back down. It, it hit the drop screw, but now that, that uh, spring is, what do you call it, coiled? It's like... Tense. Ten tensioned. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason that it can't push it up, unless I force it up, is because it can't overcome the friction there. Okay, so it pops up, and what's actually what it's actually popping up to is the drop screw. Pop. How, how often do you have to mess with the tension in the spring? A lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know all about that. She had a piano that the <laughs> spring was a we had springs to make were springs. disaster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only give them strength, but make new ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was because that's how you check spring strength. You want it like at a certain point. 
it can't be too hard or too weak. Right, exactly. So if it's too weak, um, Victoria, would you mind grabbing, oh, no, no, I've got a right. little screw here. Okay, if it's too weak. Oh, that one has a screw. Yeah, I see it. That's comfy. <laughs> Can I ask a kind of a general regulation question? Sure. So, say you have an older piano, and maybe it's been refurbished and worked on already. And let's get so the other. Would you grab the other? Yeah. Um, this one is. The other old. what? The other. The other action model. Is it over there? I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Matthew. Um, <clears throat> older piano. So things have already been adjusted from where they originally at, as far as the manufacturer left them. Do you ever like go back to ground zero per se? Huh? Yeah. Or instead of just working from where it's at at the current time? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, generally, generally we do work from where it's at. So ground zero is, is like brand new, when you're putting in brand new weapons, that would be ground zero. Yeah. Okay, so if the purpose, if the purpose of the repetition lever is to is the same as the purpose of the rest rail on the upright. Can you predict what would happen if the spring were too weak? Because Victoria just said that there's a range, right? Not too strong, not too not too weak. So uh, then it, you'd have a problem with the jack escaping. But it wouldn't repeat to what? all the way back okay. to where it needs Why to go. Why wouldn't it repeat? Because it's not. It doesn't have the tension to push the repetition lever back to its highest point. Correct. To push the knuckle to it to where it needs to be, so the jack can get back under. Right. Okay. Yes, that's right. I think I, I, I think you you know you know what you're talking about. You just didn't get the vocabulary quite right. It's a lot of vocabulary words. Like all at once. So if I let's see if I weaken that enough. Nope. Um, so I actually have a really cool uh, diagram for both grand and okay. uprights, as far as it names all the, the parts in the action. Yeah. So yeah, and okay I need to get if, if I made one of those for everybody. Um, sure, we 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 have that, oh. but. Uh, but, and, and I actually just kind of decided right before we started today that we're gonna do this. Otherwise, yeah, you do need that. <laughs> you for sure need that handout. Okay, so I just weakened the spring. Usually I use a tool, and I just did it with my fingers. So I didn't, wasn't really prepared with tools. Yeah, but in a real action, you don't have those fingers. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, so you can see what's going on there. It's misfiring in the same way that this is gonna misfire, okay? See what's happening? The repetition lever isn't coming up enough. Correct. So the jack's not getting back to its final resting place. The jack isn't able to get all the way under the knuckle. What what do you call the little button on the jack that you adjust? What? It's called the uh, um, um, that's for, that's for doing jack position. So I, I guess just the I don't know, <laughs> jack position button. Another step of the regulation. Yeah, right. Is, is positioning the jack. Okay. So, everybody see the parallels? I, I think you guys are getting fairly f familiar, at least most of you, with, especially Avery, with upright regulation. Okay. So, we see the similarities between that and that. Right. You see the similarities there? It's all about the jack getting under the knuckle in this case, or the hammer butt in this case. Um, okay, let's strengthen that spring again. And this is, this is a, um, a final point that I'll make and then we'll dismiss for today. Because this is, today, today's all about theory only. I just want you guys to understand what's going on. Um, 
the theory and then we'll get into the actual practice um, maybe maybe tomorrow I don't know we'll see, Let's see if that, okay we've got we've got strength again in that spring and I know that there's strength because when I put it in check and I release it it pops up that's actually too much strength but that'll be fine okay this is the last thing that I'll say about theory and, and there is more like prep yeah no this is good what actually happens in slow motion photography, and this was what I was talking about a minute ago, is when you're playing at a fast rate of repetition, the, this pop here doesn't actually happen. What actually happens is that that hammer remains stationary and the spring that when you're doing it slowly causes the hammer to pop up, that same spring, because it's coiled, it actually pushes the whipping down because there's not time for it to pop that hammer up, but rather the spring pushes the whipping down faster than gravity normally would, right? Yesterday I referenced 9.8 meters per second per second, right? Which is the rate of gravity. Everything falls at 9.8 meters per second per second. But have you ever, have you ever like, drop something and then you realize you dropped it and then you catch it, right? You're actually accelerating faster than gravity. And that's what's going on, what's going on here, is it's pushing that whipping down by the spring. It's using the hammer as a counterweight so that it can push off of the, push off of the hammer to get that whipping down faster so the jack can get back under. It's all about the jack. And that's why you can actually repeat faster on a grand than you can on an upright because you have that coiled spring pushing down faster than gravity would normally accelerate it. Okay. How are the springs attached to the actual jack? It's different in different actions. Sure. Like this one, there's a little hook. There's, there's a little... Uh, Oh, I see. Hook that attaches to a little string that comes off the back of the jack. Okay. And then this one, it goes into a little, into a little hole that's in the jack. So what happens if the spring is too strong? That's a great question. Um, do you remember the term for that? <clears throat> what you feel? Yeah, disrespectful. Oh, well. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'll explain that, <laughs> what, what she's referring to there. Do you remember what it's um, called? What people refer to it as? Oh, no I don't, but you can, f the bump? Yeah. Yeah. It's referred to as an objectionable bump. Objectionable bump, bump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meaning it just feels bad. Like you can feel, yeah, when okay. You, when you press it like very lightly, you can actually feel a bump in your finger when it's yes. too strong. Oh. That's and the objectionable it's, it's, bump. It's objectionable. <laughs> Okay, so so if I, I just strengthen the spring a little bit more, let's see if we can, yeah. Well, and, and another thing that can happen is if it's really strong is, and what's happening on this one is that hammer can rise so fast that it actually strikes the string again. That's even worse. Mm -hmm. But if it's just a little bit too strong, then this right here, you can feel it in the front of the Do you wanna, anybody wanna try it? I guess we it? call it objectionable because at times- So put it into check. And you've been and trying then, for hours on it. it. There is an acceptable bump. <laughs> well, it's but it's so faint yeah. that that you can't really feel it. Yeah, because I remember I, I was working for hours on the springs on yeah. that action. Right. And at one point you were like, there is a bump, but it's not objectionable. Just just leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It comes back up right after you've been checked. So can anybody guess, if you're going to err on one side or the other of too strong or too weak, can you guess what side you'd want to err on? Too strong. Okay, too strong. Oh, oh. If we're erring on the side? Yeah, if you're going to err on one side or the other. Too strong. Too strong, why? Because if it's too weak, then the repetition ladder is never going to make it to where it needs to go in the right amount of time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, it'll, if it's too weak, well, okay, let me start, with, if it's too strong, 
well, worst case scenario, you get you get a double strike. Mm -hmm. That's that's bad. But generally, I mean, that has to be really extreme to get a double strike like I had it there a second ago. But worst case, worst case scenario generally is you get an objectionable bump that most people aren't going to necessarily feel. They might think it's kind of weird, but whatever, it plays just fine. Funny piano. Yeah, <laughs> funny piano. Great way to put it. Whereas if you err on the side of too weak, you have catastrophic failure, meaning the note doesn't even repeat, and people are going to play it, and, and suddenly they're going to get misfires, and so it doesn't even work. So, so a lot of pianos that come straight from the factory, they are overly strong. Mm -hmm. So is that because over time the string will weaken enough to where it needs to be? Or That's a good question. Why do they make it too strong? Well, they, they, they make it too strong because because they're erring on the side of too strong oh, intentionally. Okay. Um, and yeah, whether or not it weakens, I don't know. It sure doesn't seem to. Maybe slightly, I'm not sure. But, but I mean, we, 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 we work on pianos all the time. Why, <clears throat> sorry. Why does the spring insert into the jack? Isn't its Down main here? purpose to rise the repetition lever? Um, this is called butterfly spring. Yeah. And so is it just a part of where? So it actually serves two purposes. So you have two, it's, it's just wrapped around the middle here. So you have two purposes. One is that's the spring that engages the jack, that makes the jack pop back. The other one is this side of the spring, the top side of the spring, is what engages the repetition lever. It's a double it's spring. Like it's a double spring. spring. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Any other questions? There's a lot to delve in here into here. But that's that's the basic theory of how grand action works. It's basically unchanged for since about 1880 or so. Which key is this? A grand piano or an upright? Uh, grand. Which what? What? Which what? Which what? piano came, was built first? Yeah. Because they were mimicking a harpsichord. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a harpsichord with escapement mm -hmm. and mallets rather than plectors that actually strike the string. Were you the one that once mentioned what was the ideal length of a grand? Like it was impossibly yeah. long? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I that's had a totally that different subject, in my, but yes. In my head. Yeah, yeah, but I remember that like history fact. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever serviced a harpsichord? We've refinished one, but I haven't serviced one. No. So that just doesn't have escapement. Right. And it also means there's no let off. There's no shelf, right? We focus on the key, not the action. There's no boop. So right? the let off would be the actual action of you taking your finger off the key in that case. Um, where there's no let off? Yeah. There would just be no let off. It, it would feel plays. like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, let off, the, the, the idea of let off is that your or escapement, either way, it's the same word or same meaning, is that you're losing contact with the component that actually strikes the string. And so in a hammer, you have to have let off or else what? Yeah, right. Yeah, what Avery and Avery said, it'll just stay there and it'll just stick against the string and it'll, it'll sound like a clunk, clunk, as opposed to striking, it'll go Ding, right? And a harpsichord, it, it, the reason it doesn't pluck it, or the reason it doesn't stick against it is because it actually rises above the string, plucking mm -hmm. it, and like a like a guitar, does a fingers. Have dampers or anything? It does have dampers, oh. yeah. So how does it look like a damper? Same way, same way that there's a little spoon back here that, oh, okay. that engages that, which lift, lifts the, oh, here it is. See it? The spoon is engaged in the back of the key about halfway or so, and that damper rises. Mm -hmm. um, a 
okay, you can stop the video.